Let's get right to it. Uh, thank you for joining us today and welcome to our presentation of your guide to benefits and financial assistance. Uh, my name is Alessandra and I will be presenting today. My colleague is also, my colleague Ramel is also participating at this workshop and um, will answer your questions at the end of the presentation. He's kind of um, keeping track of the chat box. So if you have any questions, um, please use the chat box feature. You are muted and it's at the bottom of your screen. Uh, you would click on chat and a box will open on the chat icon and a box um, will open where you can type in your question. Um, if you can also please type in your city, county, or state, uh, we would love to know where everyone is calling from. Uh, now, today we have 40 minute limit and the presentation is about 30 minutes and we will take the remaining time to answer as many questions as we can. For those whose questions we cannot get to, we, uh, we're planning to email everyone, everybody the answers to all the questions sometime next week. Uh, we're also uploading handouts on the chat box. Uh, Ramel will start uploading those in a little bit. Um, some list the benefits and assistance programs that we will be reviewing today, including links to learn more about them. So if you are unable to see them or download them, please email us and we'll be happy to send them to you. And our last slide will have our contact information. Um, just a little bit about us. Um, Habitat East Bay Silicon Valley serves people in Alameda, Contra Costa, and Santa Clara counties through three programs. First, we offer affordable homeownership opportunities. We build new homes and renovate existing homes, and then we sell them at an affordable mortgage to qualified families with limited incomes. We also offer housing counseling services. Our housing counseling program is certified by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Um, and through one-on-one -on -one counseling, we provide help to people who want to learn strategies for budgeting income and expenses, savings, managing debt, credit repair, credit building, or improving the credit score. And for people whose goal is home ownership, we can help them prepare to reach that goal. We also offer financial education workshops and the eight hour first time on buyer class. Uh, through our owner occupied home repair services, um, our home preservation program provides grants and low interest loans for low income homeowners throughout our service area. But today we're going to be covering um, cash and housing assistance uh, that's available, health care programs, social security benefits, disability benefits, and we'll also review um, COVID-19 financial um, related financial relief, um, financial relief that's related to people affected by COVID-19. So there are public assistance programs that provide qualified low income families cash aid benefits that can help pay for housing, food, utilities, and other necessary expenses. CalWORKs is also known as temporary assistance for needy families or TANF and provides cash aid and employment services to eligible families that have children in the home. Anyone receiving CalWORKs aid must participate in the welfare to work program unless they are exempt. Now this program promotes self-sufficiency by helping recipients become employed. Depending on the recipient situation, it helps with job placement, education and training programs, and also pays for expenses like transportation to work and training costs. The CalWORKs Child Care Program helps parents who participate in the Welfare to Work Program access immediate short-term child care and also pay for child care expenses. Now, food and nutrition programs include CalFresh, which is also known as the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP. Um, and this program helps qualified low-income people cover food costs. The Women, Infants, and Children Program, or WIC, um, serves children up to age five, pregnant women, new mothers, dads, grandparents, foster parents of young children, and working families. Um, what it does is it provides vouchers for healthy foods and also referrals to healthcare and other community services. Um, the California Veterans Cash Benefit provides a cash benefit to eligible veterans as a supplement to special veterans benefits. And the Refugee Cash Assistance Program provides cash aid to refugees without children who are not eligible for any other cash aid. Um, RCA also offers employment and social services to help refugees become self-sufficient. 
Um, now, eligible low-income households can get help uh, uh, with covering energy costs through bill payment assistance, weatherization, and energy efficiency repairs. Uh, typically, qualification is based on household income, and this is true for most of the benefits programs. Um, the California Low Income Energy Assistance Program is a federally funded program that helps eligible households cover their heating and cooling costs in several ways. It offers uh, one-time financial assistance to help balance a utility bill. It provides assistance in a crisis situation, for example, after receiving a 24 to 48 hour disconnect notice or service termination by the utility company. And it also offers free energy efficiency upgrades to help lower the monthly utility bill. Now to determine your eligibility, you would need to contact your local ener um, energy agency. And PG&E uh, specifically offers several energy assistance programs. The REACH program provides um, an energy credit for up to $300 based on the past due bill. Um, to help keep the service connected, it also offers a payment arrangement program that allows a customer to schedule payment of their current balance over several months. And then it has two long-term assistance uh, programs. One is CARE, which offers a discount on gas and electric rates. And the other one is FARA. Um, so it's CARE, C-A-R-E, and FARA, spelled F-E-R-A, which offers a discount on electric rates to households of three or more people. And they also have an energy savings assistance program that provides no-cost weatherization services to households who meet the CARE income guidelines um, to help them keep the energy costs down. Now, people who are eligible for public assistance programs like Medicaid, CalFresh, or SSI, and below market rate housing programs um, may also qualify for affordable high speed internet. Um, and AT&T and Comcast both offer their own program. Uh, there's also the California Line program, uh, sorry, California Lifeline program that helps lower phone bill costs uh, by providing qualified households discounts on home phone and cell phone services. And to apply, you would need to contact your local telephone company. Um, also, or, uh, some organizations offer one-time utility payment assistance, um, and you can call 211 to connect to programs in your area. Now, given the low availability of affordable housing here in the Bay Area, to increase your um, to chances of finding below market rate rental housing, it's important to reach out to as many programs as possible and to add um, your name to as many wait lists as you can, if that's what you're looking for. Now, housing authorities offer a rental uh, payment assistance program known as the Housing Voucher Program or Section 8. Now, as we all know, unfortunately, here in the Bay Area, most Section 8 wait lists are closed, um, but do check your local housing authority for their wait list status. Um, and there are many nonprofits that build and manage properties and offer below market rate rental housing, like Mid Pen Housing, Bridge Housing, Mercy Housing. Um, and as well as cities and counties also um, offer their own below, below market rate rental programs. Um, and they typically give preference to people who live or work within their boundaries. Um, so uh, you can visit your city or county's housing department website to see if they offer such programs. Um, and again, uh, there's organi organizations that help kind of with the one-time payment assistance and some offer one-time rent and rent deposit assistance. And again, you can call 211 to connect to programs in your area. Now the HUD VASH program is specifically for veterans and it's a collaboration between HUD and the VA and is available to veterans and their families who are homeless. Um, HUD provides rental assistance vouchers for privately owned housing and the VA case managers connects them to support services. Additionally, a new VA subsidy that's called the Shallow Subsidy Initiative helps low-income veterans um, afford housing in high rent areas by providing them with a fixed rental subsidy for up to two years. And the Elder Care Locator is a public service that helps connect older adults and their families to services like housing, health insurance, benefits programs, and transportation. Now the continuum of care is a planning body. This is still along the line of housing um, assistance. Um, continuum of care is a, this is a, for emergency housing, um, is a planning body that helps people and families who are homeless or at risk of becoming homeless 
and need emergency housing can add to services without having to go from program to program and apply for one housing opportunity at a time. Now through an intake process that's called the BI SPDAT, um, they can assess if someone is eligible for supportive housing opportunities and then identify which services and housing programs best fit their situation. Now people complete the VI SPDAP through an access point like public housing agencies, emergency shelters, drop-in centers, um, and by calling 211 you can find an access point near you. That's how you would find a one um, closest to you. The information um, of the VI SPDAT is then entered into a secure database that's called the Homeless Management Information System. And now participating agencies use this database to communicate with each other about a person's case. If a person's needs match the services provided by a housing program, they're then placed in a community pool which works on a first come first serve basis. Those who are most vulnerable and the most in need will be connected uh, to available housing programs first. And persons whose needs do not match the services provided by housing program are referred to other services. Um, now, depending on your situation, there are services and programs that can help you get low cost health insurance coverage. Um, Cover California is a marketplace that helps individuals and families get free or low cost health insurance or get help paying for private health insurance. Any Californian can get health insurance through Cover California if they are a state resident and cannot get affordable health insurance through a job. Um, Medi-Cal is California's Medicaid health care program, and it's a free or low-cost public health insurance program that provides health care services for low-income families, seniors, um, persons with disabilities, children in foster care, pregnant women, um, and certain low-income adults. Um, and applications for Medi-Cal can be submitted through your local county social services office, by mail, or online through Cover California. Um, now, the California Healthy Families is a program that offers low-cost insurance for California children and teens. Um, it provides health, dental, and vision coverage to children who do not have insurance and do not qualify for free Medi-Cal. Um, and Medicare is the federally funded health insurance um, that helps cover the cost of health care for people 65 or older and certain people under 65 with disabilities. Now, Part A helps for inpatient care, for example, in a hospital or a skilled nursing facility following um, a hospital stay. And Part B helps cover doctor's visits and preventative services. Um, the Medicare Savings Program helps pay for premiums, deductibles, coinsurance fees, and prescription drugs costs for people who are on Medicare who have limited income and resources. Um, the IHSS program helps pay for services to help California residents who get Medi-Cal and are over 65, disabled or blind, remain safely in their home. Now, disabled children may also be eligible for IHSS. Um, most people get services free of charge. Um, a social worker assists um, them in finding a care provider, which, uh, sorry, care provider, which may be a family member, friend, neighbor, or a registered IHSS provider. Um, Rotor Care Bay Area is a nonprofit that hosts free medical clinics uh, where volunteer medical professionals provide free healthcare services to uninsured families and individuals who have limited ability to pay for medical care. And COBRA allows someone who loses their job temporarily keep their job-based health insurance, usually for up to 18 months. Now, most employers with group health plans offer this option to employees. Um, however, usually the beneficiary is required to pay the, to pay the entire cost of COBRA coverage, um, which can be quite costly. But you do have that option. Now, Social Security uh, uh, can provide you, your spouse, and other eligible members of your family with benefits uh, when you retire, if you become disabled, and when you die. Uh, your retirement benefit amount depends on several factors, including your lifetime earnings and your age when you start collecting Social Security benefits. Um, you can start collecting um, monthly payments as early as age 62, but the longer you wait to collect, the higher the payment amount you will receive until you turn 70. 
even if you've never worked under Social Security, you may be able to get your spouse's retirement benefits if you're at least 62 years of age and your spouse is receiving retirement or disability benefits. Um, survivor benefits may also be available to widows or widowers, um, divorced spouses, provided that the marriage lasted 10 years or more. And parents who are 62 years or older and were dependent on the deceased for at least half of their support. And child insurance benefits are available to children whose parents become disabled or die under a certain circumstances, also a stepchild, a grandchild, a step-grandchild, or an adopted child may also be eligible. Um, now, disability benefits are available both at the federal and state level. Workers' compensation provides benefits to workers when their injury or illness arises out of or is caused by their work. Workers' comp may also pay medical bills and benefits for temporary or permanent disabilities. SSDI is a long-term disability insurance that's available to people who become disabled and are unable to work. It allows them to receive their Social Security retirement benefits early. SSI is a program run jointly by the federal and state, pro, uh, state governments that is based on financial need. It pays benefits to disabled adults and children who have limited income and resources. Now, individuals may be eligible for both SSDI and SSI. However, the amount of the SSDI payment is included in calculating the eligibility for SSI. And the SSP program is a state program which supplements SSI benefits. So the state of California adds money to the SSI federal payment to account for the state's higher cost of living. living. Um, people who qualify for SSI also qualify for SSP and may also be eligible for CalFresh. SDI is the short-term disability insurance that provides wage replacement benefits to eligible California workers who need to take time off work. And it offers two programs. One is the disability insurance program, uh, which uh, provides partial wage replacement benefits in, if unable to work due to a non-work related illness, injury, or pregnancy. And paid family leave provides partial wage benefits to employees who need to take time off work from work um, time off from work to care for a seriously ill family member or to bond with a new child. Now, paid family leave also includes now people who are unable to work because they're caring for an ill or quarantined family member with COVID-19. And CAPI is a state-funded program that provides monthly cash benefits to aged, blind, and disabled non-citizens who are ineligible for SSI or SSP due to their immigration status. Um, CAPI recipients may also be eligible for Medi-Cal, CalFresh, and IHSS. Now, the benefits that are available to people impacted by COVID-19 is an ever-evolving situation. How long the benefits will last and whether the deadlines will be extended or additional benefits granted is still unclear. It is based on how severe or how long the COVID-19 impacts will be. But financial assistance is available both at the federal and state level and through financial institutions. And it includes unemployment and disability insurance, relief from financial institutions, rent eviction moratoriums, student loan relief, and a tax filing deadline that has been extended to July 15, 2020. Now, under the CARES Act that was signed on March 27, there are two protections for homeowners who have been impacted by COVID-19 and have a loan that is owned by FHA, USDA, VA, Fannie Mae, or Freddie Mac. First, lenders or loan servicers cannot start or finalize a foreclosure, and this period has just been extended from May 17 to June 30, 2020. Second, homeowners can request a forbearance for up to 180 days with a 180-day extension available if needed. This is when your lender or mortgage servicer allows you to temporarily pause or reduce your payments. Now, during this forbearance period, no additional fees, penalties, or interest will be added to the account. However, the regular interest will continue accruing. If you want to request this forbearance, you must contact your loan servicer. And if you decide to sign up for a forbearance plan, ask the servicer how you will have to pay back the amount owed. Will you owe the entire amount in a lump sum when the period ends or at the end of your loan term? This is also known as a balloon payment. Will your payments be higher for a period of time? 
And keep in mind that forbearance does not erase what you owe. You will have to repay any missed or reduced payments in the future. So if you're at all able to keep up with your payments, continue making them. And watch out for scams, emails, text messages, phone calls telling you that they can help you reduce or stop payments. Make sure you're working directly with your mortgage servicer. Now the CARES Act also includes a 120 day rent moratorium on evictions and late fees for properties that have mortgages backed the by the federal government like public housing. On March 27, Governor Newsom announced financial relief for Californians who are struggling with COVID-19. And this includes um, for at least 90 days, financial institutions are waiving fees and charges for missed or late credit cards and loan payments and waiving penalties for early CD withdrawals. Financial institutions will also not share late or missed payments with the credit reporting um, agencies, which means that credit history and score will not be negatively impacted. And for people who have privately owned home loans, some of the largest banks offer mortgage and fees relief, mortgage payment forbearance of up to 90 days, and a moratorium on initiating foreclosure sales or eviction for at least 60 days. And a California executive order temporarily halts all eviction through May 31st. I know that's coming up. Um, you know, but um, we'll give you a, a link later to see if there's any updates on that. Um, for renters who cannot pay their rent because of COVID-19 related economic hardships and also protects against critical utility shutoffs. Um, cities and counties also have enacted their own local eviction moratorium, so check for ordin ordinances specific to where you live. If you have been financially impacted due to COVID-19 and are struggling to pay rent, explain your financial situation to your landlord, um, save all financial documents, pay as much of your rent as you can. And if your landlord is attempting to evict you for not paying rent and you took all the above steps, um, then contact a local aid provider. However, keep in mind that any missed payments must be made to landlords when the moratorium is lifted to avoid evictions. Um, now, borrowers of federal student loans also are automatically placed in forbearance, um, although they can still make payments if they choose, and their interest um, is set um, uh, temporarily at 0% on all loans owned by the Education Department. Uh, California borrower, borrowers of privately owned student loans and struggling to make payments um, may also be eligible for relief and should contact their financial institution to see which options are available. And they can also consolidate their loans uh, not owned by the education department into a federal direct consolidation loan, which would then be eligible for the 0% interest. Now, anyone receiving uh, state or local government financial assistance in response to COVID-19 are exempt from wage garnishment, uh, although wages may still be garnished for child support, family support, spousal support, or criminal, criminal restitution for victims. Uh, to receive the economic impact payment, also known as the stimulus checks, most people don't have to do anything. Um, the payment will be directly deposited into a bank account, sent by check, or on a prepaid visa debit card issued by MetaBank. For filers who meet the income thresholds, individuals receive $1,200, people filing joining, joining $2,400, and there's an additional $500 that's being paid for each qualifying child. For filers with incomes above the threshold amounts, the payment is reduced by $5 for each $100 above the income threshold. Now, through the pandemic emergency employment compensation, individuals can receive an additional 13 weeks of unemployment benefits after they exhaust their state benefits. Most states offer 26 weeks of unemployment benefits, so eligible employees can um, receive up to 39 weeks. Unemployment insurance is available to workers who have become unemployed or partially unemployed and meet the program's eligibility requirements. And you can file for unemployment insurance if your employer reduced work hours or shut down operations due to COVID-19, or if your children's school closed due to COVID-19 and you have to miss work to be there for them. Pandemic unemployment assistance is for workers who are not eligible for unemployment insurance. It includes business owners, self-employed, independent contractors, and freelancers. freelancers. 
and workers who, as a direct result of COVID-19, are still unemployed or partially unemployed after collecting all unemployment benefits for which they were eligible may also qualify. The Pandemic Unemployment Compensation is a federal program that provides an additional $600 per week to individuals who are collecting regular unemployment insurance. For example, let's say someone is receiving unemployment insurance uh, payment of $340 a week. Their biweekly payment would equal to $680. If they are unable to work because they're sick or quarantined due to COVID-19, and this must be certified by a medical professional, they will receive an extra $600 a week payment. This means that their biweekly payment would increase to $1,880. And this is through July 31st, 2020 at this time. Now scammers are taking advantage of the COVID-19 pandemic to con people into giving them their money. The FTC reports that millions have been lost due to frauds related to the pandemic. Um, so um, don't respond to texts, emails, or calls about checks from the government. They can look real and official, but keep in mind the government or legitimate, legitimate financial institution will never ask for money or your personal information over the phone, email, or text. Anyone who tells you to pay by Western Union or MoneyGram or by putting money on a gift card is a scammer. Don't click on links, download attachments, ignore online offers for vaccinations. Be wary of ads for test kits, hang up on robocalls, watch for emails claiming to be from the CDC or WHO, never donate in cash by gift card or by wiring money, and don't give any personal identifiable information to anyone who contacts you by phone in person, by text message or email, including bank account number, social security number, Medicare ID number, um, nothing that's person personally identifiable. And to keep up to date with the latest developments, it's important you keep up to date because, again, as I said, this is an ever-evolving situation. So um, uh, you can check benefits.gov. Um, you can also check for the latest news on federal benefits by visiting usa.gov slash coronavirus. And for the latest news on state benefits, you can visit covid19.ca.gov. Now this is the end of our presentation and I will now turn it over to Ramel so he can answer the questions in the chat box and we need to make sure that you can all hear Ramel. Um, if you cannot see or download the handouts um, in the chat box, please um, uh, use uh, email us. This is our contact information and we'll be happy to mail them to you. Like I said, one of the handouts has all these programs listed with links um, and information on how to get more information. Now, if you would like to meet with a HUD certified housing counselor, you can find a list on the HUD website. Uh, we are a HUD approved housing counseling agency and you can contact us directly if you would like to meet with us. At this time, we're only offering phone and video appointments, but when we're able to offer in-person appointments, we will schedule them at our office. So please connect with the counselor that is closer to you. Thank you so much for attending today's webinar. We will be offering more webinars on other topics, so please check our website for upcoming dates. Um, and I will now pass it on to Ramel, but we'll leave the slide up so you can take down all the contact information. And um, I'm hoping you can all hear Ramel because I cannot. Um, and if you cannot hear Ramel, can uh, please write it on the chat box. Um, but it looks like we have. There are currently uh, two questions there. Um, can everyone hear me first? It looks like there's um, a, a question on unemployment. Yes. Can you all hear Ramel? Yes, they can hear me. They have chimed in in the chat box that they can hear me. First question is from Janelle Daniels. Um, is, question okay. is in, I'm, I'm assuming Ramel is talking to you all because I'm on radio silence here, <laughs> unfortunately. Right, let me tell Alessandra I am speaking. All right. So now that I see that you can hear me, the first question was from Janelle in regards to unemployment. Um, and Janelle, I, I almost want to take this question last because I have to ask you a question in regards to this. I want to find out if that claim in January that you received was your last claim for unemployment or was it just starting at that time? 
And then the only other question that we had was in regards to, uh, this is from uh, Ms. Nguyen, in regards to the low income housing first time home buyer program, where you're required to attend this actual webinar. Unfortunately, the answer to that is no, this is not the orientation. Um, take a look at our website. We will have a posting on our next orientation, but this is just information in regards to COVID and, and how to manage your income in tough type situations or tight, tight months. Oh, first claim just starting. Okay, Janelle, in that case, you do not need to reapply. You should be fine if you got that in January. I assume that you are still getting um, payments from unemployment and I'm hoping that you are. Okay, great. Yes, if your claim is still active, you do not need to reapply. Um, and Twee, in regards to attending the orientation, um, I, well, you can definitely check our website. If you just go to uh, habitatebsv.org, um, you can go and check our website, go to, uh, gosh, events, or well, it's about tab first and then events. Once you get to events, you'll be able to see all of the upcoming uh, events that we have scheduled there. I hope that answered your question, T. If not, please reach out and send me an email or give me a call. I'll be more than happy to answer that question for you. On, so you happen to know if EDD retro the claim. Now I do, and Anne's question is, do I happen to know if EDD uh, will retro her claim or on the date of the filing? Um, that I do not have an answer to. You, you, you really need to contact EDD and, and discuss that with them. All right, one more question from Alicia. What would be a good way to approach my current landlord about being behind on my rent due to COVID-19? I would definitely contact them in writing. I would put it in writing personally just to, so you can prove that uh, you actually did that. Keep a copy for yourself. Email would be fine, but I would definitely reach out to them, say that I am having some troubles paying my rent due to COVID-19, um, being laid off or whatever your case may be. There are um, just as Alessandra said, as we were going through the presentation, there are rent eviction moratoriums and mortgage moratoriums, so you cannot get evicted at this particular time. Although they will be expiring soon, I will definitely reach out in writing to my landlord, let them know that you've been affected by COVID-19. It has affected your income and your ability to pay your rent. Any other questions out there? Okay, well, if that is it, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for attending today. Um, you are very welcome. And we'll go ahead and end this meeting if there are no other questions. All righty, great. We're all done. Have a wonderful afternoon. It is a pleasure being here today. I'm seeing from the chats that it looks like Ramel has answered all the questions. Uh, wonderful. Thank you so much, everybody, for attending. And um, hopefully, you, we hope you can join us for another webinar soon. Um, yes, I see that. Can this PowerPoint be shared? We are recording the 